Hey, Bruce Naylor, you're a boomer consumer. And who says you have to spend a lot of money to get world-class audio from a pair of headphones? And you don't. With the Sundera closed back headphones from Hi-Fi Man. We're going to talk about it in this video. Now, as a disclaimer, these were sent to me at no cost by Hi-Fi Man. However, all opinions are my own and no one has reviewed this video prior to posting. Why closed back headphones? So you have open back and closed back. Open back, I think, uh, and I tend to be more of a fan of open back headphones because I kind of like to hear what's going on around me a little bit, but there's some disadvantages. And two of the major disadvantages of open back headphones is one, the background noise, if you've got a noisy environment and you're trying to listen, or number two, because of the way open backs are designed, they're more susceptible to dust, debris, that kind of thing, getting inside of those really expensive drivers in your headphones. So these feature what Hi-Fi Man calls their Super Nano Diaphragm drivers, and essentially they're about 80% thinner than you'd find on a typical uh, driver in a, in, a, uh, in a headphone. So that being the case, you get a little bit less resonance, you get a little bit better fidelity with these smaller and thinner drivers. Now, I'm sure you're gonna ask me what the difference is between the Sonderas and then the closed backs. We're gonna talk about those a little bit later uh, in the video, but obviously the first and most striking thing is this beautiful beech wood, uh, hardwood on the sides of the ear cuts. And it is good looking. And I just love the orange and black look of these. They just stand out from the typical all black or you know the silver and black type of headphone. All right, let's talk a little bit about the specs. I've got them wrote down. I can't always remember all this stuff. But at any rate, you get a detachable 3.5 millimeter cable. It measures about a meter and a half, and it's a rubber. It's not braided, which is one of the, I think, cons. You sell for, by the way, $400. Frequency, frequency response of 6 to 50 kilohertz. Believe me, way above and beyond the range of human hearing. They weigh 432 grams or 15.24 ounces, so just slightly under a pound. Never one time, and I'm talking during all day listening sessions with these, did they ever feel real heavy or get real tiring, which is, some. I mean, what good is a pair of headphones if you can't stand how, how they feel on your head? And they feel pretty doggone good. Get this nice, see if we can get this into focus. Here we go. This nice ergonomic headband on here, adjustable. It's a metal steel frame. So you adjust it just by pulling on these and that's how you adjust it. You know what? I did not have to adjust these. These just fit really, really good. I didn't have to adjust anything out of the box, which is very rare, <laughs> very rare indeed. Okay, so one other thing I want to cover with you. This is a little bit of a note about the uh, about the drivers on these, and I'm just going to read this to you. Note, compared with rectangular shaped magnets that traditional planar headphones have, stealth magnets significantly reduce reflections and diffraction that are detrimental to the sound quality, resulting in dramatically improved sonic output. I'm a big, big fan of Hi Fi Man because I think you get a lot of value for the money. That's what this audio channel is all about getting maximum bang for your audio buck. Let's talk about unboxing these for just a second. I don't know whether I've got a different uh, box that, uh, that you would get if you ordered, but uh, it's very simple, brown box, and inside there's a headphones and an accessory box, and within that accessory box, you get a 3.5 millimeter cable with a, with a 6.35 millimeter uh, adapter, and that's it. That's, <laughs> that's all you get uh, in the box, or at least that's what I got in the box. Build quality. Let's face it, I don't care how good a pair of headphones sound if they're built crappy. And these are not. These, again, you hit this nice steel frame. Once again, I'm going to hold this up here so we can get that into focus. There you go. These beautiful beech wood ear cups on here. Adjustable right there. Nice and stretchy. I always like to do the stretch test on them. You get this nice little headband inside. See if you can see that. Get that nice headband on there. Cups are marked left and right inside. Get these really thick. See if we can get this in frame in, uh, or in focus. See so if we can get this. Can we get this in focus here? There we go. Get these really nice, thick, padded ear cups on there. Kind of a pleather material around there. And then this headband is a, a pleather 
material with a nice felt on there. Very, very comfortable, very, very well built. Adjustable headband, and then you get your inputs on the bottom of the cups. I'll give that into focus. Yeah, there's your left and right. That's where the cables would go into with the Sundara closed back headphones. Let's uh, talk about the sources that I use. I decided I was going to test these using all vinyl, and I just got a vintage Marantz, the 2230, um, totally restored. New caps, transistors, the whole nine yards. This thing is factory fresh. And you know what? It's got one of the best phono amps I've ever heard. So I paired that up with my Fluence RT85 with an Ortofon blue cartridge and started spinning vinyl and listening to it all through these headphones. And the headphone amp on that 2230 is outstanding. I did try it with a few others we'll talk about a little bit later in the video, but for the most part, mostly vinyl. And the first, let me take these off. <laughs> Look kind of ridiculous that way, don't I? The first is this. Meet the Beatles. Supposed to be the first album released by the Beatles. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Uh, I think the very first album they released was called Please Please Me. This uh, is actually the first American album. However, it was not. Um, there was another company called VJ Records. And VJ released Introducing the Beatles about 10 days before this came out. Regardless, uh, a wonderful album. Uh, made a few notes listening to this. The track I saw her standing there, the bass guitar, superb with this. The vocals were crisp. They weren't overwhelming. Uh, by the way, this is um, a mono record, uh, but it can be played on uh, a stereo turntable as well. Paul McCartney, uh, it, it just sounded fantastic. And then the track, Till There Was You. His voice, Paul McCartney's voice, sounded like you were in the room with Paul. This is with closed back headphones. All right, sounded fantastic. So then moving on, <laughs> everybody recognize this guy? Kind of looks pretty evil in this, doesn't he? Whew. Bill Collins recorded this while he was going, it's called Face Value, recorded this going through a divorce. Not a pleasant one, obviously, because a lot of these songs on here are very personal about his life at that point in time. And of course, the monster hit in the air tonight. This album really brought the Sundara closed backs to life, right? So in the air tonight, I'm thinking, yeah, it sounds okay, but not great. But boy, when the drum solo kicks in, my gosh, that thing just came to life. I couldn't have been more pleased with the way that uh, that sounded. Um, drums were amazing. Then the track Behind the Lines absolutely blew me away with these headphones. Sounded better than a pair of Sennheisers that I have. Um, a little bit better than some old AKGs I had laying around. Uh, my Just totally massacred my Sony's, uh, was it 7506s? Just massacred <laughs> them. I was that impressed. Great album. Probably one of the best Phil Collins albums. If you don't have any other Phil Collins album, make sure to get your copy of Face Value. Another album, I'm sure everybody's going to recognize this cover, <laughs> Candy O by The Cars. This is an album you can put on in, on my, my uh, Denon uh, turntable. I just set it up to repeat. Just play it over and over again. Um, what can I talk about on here? Yes, let's Go by Rick Ocasek. Just the the imaging, the sound stage were absolutely superb with the Sundaras. Couldn't be more pleased with it. And then of course Candy O. The synthesizers were nothing short of fantastic listening with these headphones. You never get, you know, I'm gonna try to avoid all the audio file crap, but because it's very difficult to describe sound. It's something you just know sounds right, right? And it sounded just right with this album. The, these headphones sounded magnificent. I never felt like I was losing anything, you know, because one of the 
Uh, a couple of the downsides of, of closed back headphones is one, you can't hear around you, which can be a problem at times. And secondly, resonances and low bass frequencies tend to build up with inside the cups. Never experienced that at any time with these headphones. Listen to some other stuff in digital, some of my go-to stuff, Diana Krall, for example, Nora Jones, Giant Sand, and some others. Listen to them through uh, either on CD or streaming. Never again felt, you know, um, fatigued or tiring listening to these. My ears never got real hot, but I always recommend that you take them off in uh, long listening sessions and uh, let things kind of cool off. You don't want to, you, know, you can wear these for hours and feel quite comfortable with them. That's the point. That's what I'm trying to say here. Pros and cons. That's my last way of doing things on a video. The pros. I think they're a beautiful set of headphones. The image, well, the center image is like spot on perfect on these. Big sound stage. You just, it's more of that 360 degree, you're in the recording room with the artist when you're listening to a good quality pair of headphones, such as the Sundara closed back headphones. All right, um, any other positives on here? These are gonna be recommended, if you're gonna go traveling, right? You're gonna go to the gym, you're gonna go traveling, you want a pair of closed backs as opposed to open. Open backs just tend to require a little bit more care, again, because of the very nature of their construction. So if you're going to be traveling and taking these with you, throwing them in your suitcase or whatever, you're going to want to take a pair of closed backs whenever possible. And that way you avoid dust and debris and stuff like that getting into those drivers, okay? That's kind of the idea. Plus you have absolute quiet because all the background noise is blocked out. Uh, just as comfortable. Let's talk about comparison with the Sundar. All right. Uh, <clears throat> musically, the Sundara open backs, they sound just a smidge better. And they should. That's one of the great things about open back headphones. They tend to be a little bit more area, maybe just a little bit more lively. But these were doggone close and a whole lot less distraction going on because I didn't hear any of the background noise. Pick your poison, pick your poison. But I think you can't go wrong with these. Let's talk about, again, the price, $399. Very, very reasonable for playing our headphones. Hi-Fi Man put these in a price bracket that the working person can afford. I think $399 is an excellent price for a high-quality audiophile-grade planar magnetic headphone. And finally, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it on the pros. The negatives... Uh, as I said, they didn't quite sound quite as spacious as open backs, but that's to be expected. Uh, the other thing is just the cable. It's a rubber cable, not braided, and I still feel it's a bit on the short side, but no biggie, easily replaceable, the cable with these headphones. And that is my overall review of the Sundara. Closed back headphones, very close to the Sundara's. But the Sundara open backs, I think, are just a bit more spacious and a bit more lively as to be expected between the differences between closed back and open back headphones. Whew. Bruce Naylor, your boomer consumer. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.